Hey everybody, Dr. Schultz, the Centennial Schultz Clinic. Today I'm going to be talking about cranial cervical instability and the eight most common symptoms. So thanks for checking in and let's get started. So my goals of this short presentation to explain what in the world is cranial cervical instability, what are the eight most common symptoms, and a novel new non-surgical treatment option for those patients that suffer from cranial cervical instability. So what is cranial cervical instability? It's actually a medical condition in which the duct tape, the ligaments that connect the, the head to the neck are either damaged or loosened. That's right, the ones from the back of the head down to the neck. And these are called the ALAR or transverse or accessory ligaments. So functionally, this is your cervical spine, as you can see here. This is a bowling ball called your head. And it's basically with cranial cervical instability, it's the duct tape, the things that hold the head onto the neck that are loose or damaged. And that injury causes excessive movement of this bowling ball between that and the spine. And as a result of this instability, you have a whole number of symptoms. Now, regrettably, these symptoms are not in the typical physician box. And so many providers have actually difficulty understanding this problem and putting the diagnosis together. So the eight most common symptoms of cranial cervical instability are number one, headache. Now this is not a normal headache after too much tequila. No, this is a throbbing 24 hours, seven days a week. I've got to take my head off. It is miserable. Headache that does not respond to normal medication. Symptom number two, neck pain, just debilitating neck pain. Now, most commonly, the neck pain is in the upper area, and then sometimes it can radiate to the top of the head, giving rise to this headache. But it also, as you can see here, involves the lower portion of the neck. So neck pain is number two. Number three is kind of a bobblehead. It's like, my gosh, I can't keep my head up. In fact, the telltale sign and when patients come in, sometimes they come in and they're, they're actually leaning up against the wall because their head is so heavy. It's a bobblehead. Symptom number four, an increased heart rate. Bom, 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 bom. Now there are a couple number, there are a couple of reasons for this. It may be irritation of an important nerve called the vagus. It also could be a syndrome called POTS, which is postural tachycardia syndrome. But it also, most importantly, is a malfunction of your uh, central nervous system. And it is very common, and oftentimes patients with this spend lots of money and lots of time having a workup at the cardiologist, and it's all normal. Number four, brain fog. Just You just can't quite get going. Everything's kind of cloudy. You feel like you have cotton ball stuff between your ears. Difficulty with memory and daily tasks are almost impossible. Symptom number six, dizziness. Have you ever gotten off a boat and boy, that shore is a welcome sight, but you're still out at sea and you don't have legs yet. The whole world is changing. And for balance to occur properly, you have to have a connection between the eyes, the neck, and the middle ear. Well, with cranial cervical instability, this intimate communication is lost. And you can have mild uh, dizziness, but you can also see people stagger. Some of my patients actually have to hold on to the wall at times. You would think that they've been drinking, but no, it's actually a symptom of the underlying problem. Symptom number seven, visual problems. Now this can be anything from tunnel vision to tracking problems. And unfortunately, just like those patients with the heart rate that goes too fast, they go to the ophthalmologist and they have a normal exam. There's no explanation for these symptoms. Number eight, symptom most common for cranial cervical instability is functional compromise. 
you know, sort of like this guy in the picture. Just everything is a struggle, literally every single, single, single thing from daily activity to chores is just miserably difficult. And it can just happen like that. Oftentimes, these patients are physically and socially isolated. In fact, in some of the extreme cases, they're actually housebound and spend hours at a time in bed or on the couch. What's the treatment for cranial cervical instability? It depends upon the severity of the instability and symptoms. And when appropriate, conservative care is always first line therapy. But all too often, they end up with this surgical repair, which is basically a bolt in the back of your head, then connected to your cervical spine. This is called a cranial cervical fusion, and it's a game changer. And it's also associated with significant immediate risks and also long-term risk because what happens is there's breakdown called adjacent segment disease below the level of fusion. So is there another option for those patients that actually have cranial cervical instability? And the answer is yes. It's called the percutaneous implantation of the cervical ligaments, PICL, think of pickle. It was pioneered here at the Centennial Schultz Clinic back in 2015, and it utilizes a patient's own stem cells to facilitate the healing of these damaged or stretched ligaments. Now, this is a very complex procedure. We go through the back of the throat, as you can see here. There are two little uh, uh, entry points, and we put a needle adjacent the spinal cord and use a patient's cells to facilitate and accelerate the healing of the damaged ligaments. This is only a procedure that's performed here in Broomfield, Colorado. So what is the next step? We've talked about what cranial cervical instability is. We've talked about the eight most common symptoms. Now, if you or a loved one have these symptoms and no one can quite put it all together in your community, there is hope, there is an answer. Regrettably, cranial cervical instability is poorly understood and as a result, oftentimes missed or misdiagnosed. Please schedule a telemedicine evaluation from, the, from your living room or your chalet in the mountains. We can do a consultation with a board certified fellowship trained physician. We can help you guide the question do I have cranial cervical instability? And what's the next appropriate treatment? Alternatively, you can come here to our Broomfield um, office and see us and meet us in person. Here's our website. I hope you found this as helpful. Cranial cervical instability is a life-changing uh, diagnosis and problem set. Thankfully, there are non-surgical options. So I hope you found this helpful. Please stop the suffering today. Give us a call. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.